Hi, I'm Shoestring J and welcome back to my channel where I talk about all things thrifty, frugal and money saving. As some of you will know if you watch my videos regularly, I am currently experimenting with a low carb diet. Um, I'm not doing fully keto, but I am doing low carb, no gluten, no sugar, no alcohol. And this is because I have very bad joints and lots of aches and pains and fibromyalgia. And I'm experimenting as to whether this sort of diet is beneficial for those kind of conditions. So I'm giving it a good go. I have had the odd lapse. I haven't been completely sticking to it, but I've mostly been sticking to it. And I find it's a lot easier to do if I plan things carefully. And I tend to plan meals anyway, but I don't necessarily plan in all snacks and that kind of thing. So I'm doing that too, because it's the snacks that, that will kill me in the end. I think I just want a biscuit. So I'm making sure I've got enough of those things. And, and something else I have mentioned in other videos is that it's more expensive eating this way. I've not found that I can easily stick to my previous food, food budget when I'm not eating the fillers like pasta and rice and bread and that kind of thing. But, you know, I do feel better for it already, I think. So it's worth it. But I still want to find ways to, you know, eat low carb on a budget. So I've explored three recipes in this video. One is a kind of main course. Um, one is something that you could use for breakfast or lunch and one is a kind of snack. So without further ado, I'll show you what I've been making today. So I'm going to use this little waffle maker that I bought in Aldi recently. And I'm using a recipe from this quick keto book, which I think is quite good. Um, I've used a few different things from here. But today it's cheesy grain free waffles. Um, although you can obviously only fit one of one waffle in at a time with this, it's only a little one. But I only want to make probably a couple. This said it's it makes two waffles, so I'll do one at a time and maybe freeze one of them for another day. Okay, let's get this show on the road. It's a funny camera angle. You can kind of see me, and you can kind of see what I'm doing. Hopefully, it will do. As you know, I don't have a camera. I always just use my phone, so it is as it is. So I'm supposed to beat up the soft cheese and luckily I literally had just enough soft cheese for this recipe. You should always check your ingredients before you start, shouldn't you? I literally had enough. I was supposed to use three large pastured eggs. Well, that kind of thing is really not that frugal. I mean, I don't even know what a pastured egg is. I assume it's kind of free range grass fed chickens or something. And because I am doing this on a budget, I buy everything from Aldi or Lidl, almost everything anyway, anything I can get from Aldi and Lidl I buy because they're cheaper. So these are just ordinary free range eggs. I used to actually keep my own chickies at one point in my life, but then I kept moving house and I ended up rehoming the ones that were left. Foxy's got a lot of them. Rehomed the ones that were left after our last fox attack with a friend and then I never replaced them because we had so many foxes in the garden at our last house. We do we don't have as many now, so theoretically we could get chickens again now and I would love them. I used to love having chickens. I used to love the little noises they made in the garden. Lovely. But I'm not sure what Archie would be like with the hens. My last dog Billy, she was a, a Labrador and she was so friendly. She loved everything and everybody. And the chickens, you know, they were friends. <laughs> the chickens used to go and sit with her and peck her bone. She didn't mind at all. So you're supposed to whiz these up, just mix them well. So I've done that, mix the cream cheese and the eggs. And then we've got to place the Parmesan and the cheddar, plus all the dry ingredients on top. So I have half a cup of cheddar. How much Parmesan do I need? A third of a cup. Well, let's use the bottle cup size, we? we might as well make life easier. And I'm not freshly grating this. It's Again, it's just, some sort of parmesan-y type cheese, Grama Padano from Aldi or Lidl, I think it was Aldi. So I need a third of a cup of that. I actually love this stuff. I think it adds such a nice cheesy flavour to anything. It's much nicer than it used to be when you got it really great. It used to be just like a load of talcum powder, didn't it? Um, what else do I need? I need three tablespoons. I can use either flax meal or four tablespoons of almond flour. I'm going to go for the flax meal because this has been hanging around a little while 
and needs using up. So let's see how that goes. And also it makes a change really, doesn't it, from using coconut and everything. So I've got three of those, I guess because it absorbs more liquid than maybe the, the coconut does, uh, than the um, almond does rather. And then I do need coconut flour as well, just one tablespoon of coconut flour, which I have here. I get these big supplies like this from Buy Whole Foods online. I think they're quite good. Sometimes from the grape tree. I find both Buy Whole Foods online slightly cheaper. Okay, so that's coconut flour. And then we need a teaspoon of mixed dried Italian herbs. Well, these are mixed dried herbs. They don't specify Italian, but they all have the same kind of things in them. One of those. When I went to the restaurant and had these chaffles, they used all fresh herbs and they were really nice. So if I'd had some fresh herbs at this point, I would have put some in. And then I haven't got garlic powder, but I've got minced garlic. I think that will do, minced dried garlic. How much do I want? Half a teaspoon of that. Okay. That's about right. And I am supposed to use powdered onion at this point. Don't have powdered onion, but I do have onion salt. So I'll use that. And then be careful how I season it. So half a teaspoon of that. But I do actually need, well, I'll put a little bit more because I need to put some salt in as well. Just a little salt and pepper is the last thing. So if I just stick with the pepper and then I'll test the batter. So that's everything. I haven't missed anything out, have I? So it's quite easy. I suppose I could have used my electric hand mixer for this, but I didn't think it through. <laughs> I don't think it needs to be super light, it just needs to be well combined. So it's made a kind of grainy, wholemeal-y looking batter because obviously it's got the flax meal in it. So if you prefer them not to look so grainy, you'd be better off using the almond flour, wouldn't you? But I think it looks quite nice and rustic. Now, I reckon this might make three in my little waffle maker. It looks like quite a lot. I think that's pretty well combined. Give some taste. I know I'm eating raw egg, but I'm, uh, that's really salty enough, so, and I can taste the onion. So what I have to do now is get this to warm up for a couple of minutes. And what, it's a very basic one, so you turn it on and it comes on. So I know that some of them are much more complicated than this. It didn't say that I have to and grease it or anything so I'm assuming it's going to be fine and I've got to pour the batter into the preheated waffle maker close and cook for one to two minutes or until crisped up and cooked through well the recipe in the instruction booklet for this says well it's not a recipe but it says when you're making a waffle strip for six minutes so I guess this is the ingredients that I've got here so I'll go with that it's not long is it and then you can freeze any leftovers. So I'm going to have one of these for lunch and then I'll freeze any others that I make from this for another day, as I say, but obviously let them cool first. I'll leave that a couple of minutes. So I've just remembered I forgot the baking powder. You're supposed to use gluten-free baking powder. I don't have gluten-free. Um, if you're really, really celiac or something, obviously you're going to need to make sure you've got gluten-free. I'm not eating gluten, but I'm avoiding it generally, but if I have the odd bit, it's not going to kill me. If I realised that, because I was putting everything away, I realised I hadn't actually used the, the powder. That will, that, that will do. And this is now hot enough, so... And is it the sound of the biggest spoon? Up to three quarters fillet or two-thirds fillet. It's quite a runny batter. Ooh, it's good on. It's good in. Oh, that's probably, I'll probably overfill that. I don't know. We'll see. Let's have a go. Let's do, we'll do it for two minutes and see what it looks like. Put my timer on. Okay, let's have a little look. It's been about two and a half minutes. That feels very soft to me. I don't know, I think that's too soft. I'm gonna give that another minute. Okay, let's have another look. That feels a bit better. 
Okay, I'm going to unplug it just for now so I can get it out. Hopefully I can get it out. Oh yeah, it's come out nice and evenly. There it is. Well, that looks okay, doesn't it? Definitely does need longer than two minutes. Two minutes is not enough. Right, let's get some more. That was about the right amount, wasn't it, as well? So it's kind of even with the edge. Oh, got it slightly on the wonk now. That's not going to be good, is it? this a try while we're waiting, see what it tastes like. Try the little edge here. It's got to the kind of that kind of consistency you get a lot with them. Um, carb, bready type replacements, egginess. Hmm, that actually tastes really nice though. You could really taste cheesy. So that is really nice, actually. It's really nice warm. And I think it's not massive. I think I'm going to end up eating more than one of those. So looks like I'm having one of these as my 11s is. <laughs> and the other one is actually spilling over. I've put too much batter in this time. So I've got it right the first time. I was kind of conservative with it. And then I was a bit gung-ho this time. So my first one's a perfect little heart and I think the second one's going to be a bit more raggedy but I think it will make about four looking at the amount of batter mix that's left. So perhaps I'll have two today and two to go in the freezer. God, they're actually really nice. I think it would pay to have these not too thick I think if you had them too thick, they wouldn't be as nice. And I also think these are nicer than the ones I haven't had in the Keto Cafe, which were made with almond flour. So I think perhaps flax might be nice for a change. I, I do think almond flour is really good. It's good for sweet recipes, but sometimes in savoury recipes, I find it a bit heavy. I can't believe I'm just eating that by itself. And I forgot to put the timer on this. Second one's going to be a disaster. Anyway, I'm going to sort that out and then think about what I'm going to cook next. So tonight's dinner is also from the same book, Quick Keto. And I've made this before, but I didn't really go through it in any detail when in my video. So um, it's speedy cauliflower and cheese, and it's really creamy and really tasty. So I've got the cauliflower steaming, that's nearly done, and I'll make the sauce. So I want crispy bacon for this recipe. So I'm just using this Essentials unsmoked back bacon that I bought in last week's Aldi haul. You may have seen that. I need four rashers. I managed to put them all in, but I'm putting it on Max Crisp, which is luckily one of the settings on my Ninja. And I'm just doing it for seven minutes. I don't know how long it will take, so I might go back and make it even crispier. We'll see. We've got you a funny angle again, so see the ingredients so what I have to do now is put the butter and the heavy whipping cream otherwise known as double cream together to just over a low heat so I've got half a cup of cream and a quarter of a cup of butter and I'll just put those on the low heat just to kind of melt the butter really let's get that on And then I also need to, I need to add to this cream cheese. And luckily, I discovered another thing of cream cheese in the fridge because I thought I'd run out. And I had exactly the right amount for the waffles. And then thought I was going to have to go out to the shop. So I'm going to need half a cup of this. Half a teaspoon of garlic powder, which again, I'm just using the minced dried garlic, which seems to do the job just as well. And one and a half cups of grated cheddar cheese. So need to get on and grate that. It's 
So now this is kind of warm, hot. Ish. It's steaming, but it's not boiling. It's time to add the soft cheese. So as you can see, none of these are recipes for people who are following a low fat regime. They're all very, very high fat. And the other thing I've got to add now is the garlic. So just about half a teaspoonful. And, and something I've left out of this recipe is spring onions because I didn't have any and I don't really eat a lot of onions and if I do eat them I'll t they'll tend to be spring onions because they upset my stomach a bit so I like the taste of them though so sometimes I'll just do it and I'll use onion powder instead so that's what I'm going to do just to get a slightly onion flavour. Let's mix this in. one cup of the cheddar. And I'm going to put this back on the heat now just to melt a little bit and add some, I'll add about a teaspoon of onion powder as well, onion salt. And the grated parmesan and the rest of the cheddar will go on the top. Okay, so let's do that. So the uh, bacon is Beautifully crispy and still sizzling. It's a bit too hot to handle. I'm just going to get it out a bit on the side to, to cool down a bit so I can snip it. It's a really handy feature, this Max Crisp feature in here. It's like when you've um, you've cooked something and it's not quite brown enough, but it's cooked and you just want to give it a quick extra brown. It's really useful. So that's there, that needs to go and get washed. So I'll snip that with my kitchen scissors onto just around it and about. I actually think you could very easily do this without the bacon. So if you're vegetarian, I thought that last time it's got quite a lot of saltiness already. So you don't need to add any salt because of all of the cheese. And it's really a main course in itself. You know, last time I had it, oh, I'm just gonna eat, eat a bit of this. It looks so good. Mmm, proper crispy bacon. Um, last time I, I said, I think, when I did my meal plan last week, I had it with sausage, but I just didn't need the sausage. It was like, this was enough, really. This was a main course in itself. Um, I'll maybe have it with a, some peas or something, I don't know, maybe just have something green there or, or a green vegetable, something like that, but you don't need it. So that's all of that. I'm going to add to that sauce. Which is bubbling nicely. And because it, it's, it's not that much of it, so I kind of spread it around last time to make sure everything was evenly coated. It was, there was enough. I said there wasn't enough, of, there wasn't much of it, but actually the cauliflower releases a lot more liquid and it ends up being more liquidy by the time you come to eat it. So tonight I have actually got some pork chops out to have with, but I don't, I just, again, I don't, I'm not keen to have one. I think I won't bother, but Justin will probably want one. He's one of those people that doesn't think he's got a dinner if it has any meat on it. Whereas I'm more than happy to leave the meat out, really. It's just difficult to do it when you're trying to get quite a lot of protein. When you're doing low carb, you need to vary it, really. You just don't want to eat dairy and nothing else and eggs. It gets a bit boring. Someone's going to have to lick that pan. I think it will be me. Okay. A bit so I haven't got much there. I'll spread that out a bit. Now, sprinkle the parmesan on. It's quite a lot of parmesan. It's a third of a cup. I don't always use American measurements, but I do find them very straightforward. Like fiddling around with scales and pounds and ounces or kilograms and grams. They were actually a lot easier. I probably didn't do quite enough cheddar, but there's loads in there. 
So there you go, that's ready to go in the oven later for about 15 minutes. 15 minutes tops and the recipe would be 10 to 12 minutes if I was using hot cauliflower, but I'll give it another few minutes. There you go. Oh my goodness, we just walked in the door from going to play ball and it started doing this, thank goodness. Just missed that, didn't we, Arch? So now you're just looking out the window at the rain, aren't you? Having thrown literally everything on the floor, as usual. He's thrown all of the cushions from both of the sofas on the floor and completely ignored the fact that he's got his lunch there. Right, let's get on with this cooking, Archie. It's got very dark and dingy. So now I'm making some banana muffins and I did just film all this and then realised that you couldn't see any of it. So um, I'll just tell you what I've done. So I melted some coconut oil. Just add the rest of that. I have used butter in the past for this recipe. I've never used coconut oil. But I thought I'd give that a try today. So I melted it in the microwave and I've added it to three bananas, which were previously frozen, so they're quite soft, and mixed those together and three eggs and whisked those together and also a teaspoon of vanilla essence. So I'm just at the point where I'm adding my dry ingredients. Now this recipe is from Castaway Kitchen and she does say to mix the dry ingredients in a bowl first and then add them, but I never bother doing that. It doesn't seem to be a lot of point. So what I've just added is one and a half cups of almond flour, a quarter of a cup of coconut flour, a teaspoon of cinnamon and half a teaspoon of baking powder. I'm just going to combine that properly. <laughs> That's all combined well. And then the final thing that I'm going to add, which is going to stop this being entirely low carb, is some chocolate chips. Because I couldn't get any sugar free chocolate chips, I've just got chocolate chips. They are dark chocolate chips from Tesco's, and I want a quarter of a cup of those. It's my quarter of a cup. There's a quarter of a cup of chocolate chips. I'm just going to add those in. Okay. Smash the place down. Right, there you go. So that's everything. It makes quite a sort of soft dish batter, but not runny. Next thing I need to do is get my little muffin cases ready. So they're done and they're cooled. I slightly caught them on the top, but that's okay. That's not too bad. I'm going to have one cup of tea in a minute. But first of all, I'm going to put them here and finish the washing up. So it made that does make 12 muffins, that recipe. And I will link it in the description box below. If you fancy giving it a try. So I hope you thought that that food looked interesting. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and also any recipe recommendations and website recommendations. I mentioned Castaway Kitchen. I used one of the recipes from Castaway Kitchen. I also regularly look at Sugar Free Londoner, who I think is very good as well. But let us know in the comments below what you, where you go, where your go-to places are if you're trying to eat sugar free or low carb or gluten free and that kind of thing. Anyway, if you enjoyed this, don't forget to give me the thumbs up and subscribe so you know next time I'm publishing a video. I will see you next time. Bye for now.